Hi, Tom from SolarAy here. Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to have a look, a look at what's included with a solar system, but importantly as well, what's not included, because sometimes there's some add-ons or optional extras that you actually do need to have. So it's important to know exactly what's included in the quote before you sign up to an installation. Now, firstly, let's have a quick look at the components of a system. So we've got the solar panels here up on the roof, and they're a bit of, they're, the, they're a star of the show. It's kind of the bit of the system that everyone sees when they're driving past the house and they'll be generating DC electricity that's fed into an inverter and now with the inverter we've got micro inverters which is what most of our customers choose and they're basically a small inverter that sits underneath each panel and converts the DC power to AC. Um, in this photo as well you can see we've got the rails and that's what the solar panels are mounted onto and then underneath the rails there, we've got, in this case, they're clamps because the roof is clip lock. Um, but the other common uh, roof type, of course, is tile um, or just a, a standard metal roof, such as color bond or something like that. And so you can see here, this is a, a clamp that's used on a tile roof and that's mounted onto the roof itself. And that bracket's designed so that it slips between the two rows of tiles. So we don't need to remove or break any tiles on your roof. So after it's all installed, it looks something like this. Um, and you can see there, we've got a, a safety switch on the end of the array, and we use them on basically any system that's not an end phase system, because that's a, um, a DC switch. So that'll be used on one of these two systems here. On the left, you've got a, a standard string inverter, SMA being one of the leading brands that manufacture string inverters. And on the right there, you've got a solar edge inverter, and they, they have DC optimizers, so the panels are still um, kind of separated, but not to the extent of an end-phase microinverter system. You can see there underneath those two inverters, you've got um, the, the AC isolator switch. And as a part of your installation, we'll show you um, how you use these switches if you need to turn the system off, so like the shutdown procedure, and also the startup procedure in terms of how to turn the system back on again. Um, with an end-phase system, Again, it's what most of our customers choose. Um, you can see here the, the AC switch is a little bit more familiar. It's the type of thing that you'll see in your meter board. And because the DC is um, converted to AC underneath each panel, the whole system here is basically AC. So it's what we call smarter, safer solar. It's, it's much safer to have AC um, cable runs and, and that type of thing, as opposed to high voltage DC running through a roof cavity. Um, the next thing is the online monitoring. So when we talk about configuring your system and, and that type of thing after the installation, this is what we'll do in the Enphase Enlighten portal. So we'll match up each panel, put in all the serial numbers so it's all registered properly. And then you'll get a, an overview in, in the monitoring portal that looks something like this. And importantly, you can see here, we've got um, quite different output for each panel, even on all of the ones facing north there. And the great thing about an end phase system is you've got um, basically each panel is independent of the others, whereas on a string system, they're all hooked up in series. And so they, they'll, out, they'll, they'll actually output at the level of the worst performing panel. And you can see there, there's actually quite a difference, even um, yeah, from, from the, the one on the left there, 396 up to 413. So you get the full benefit of that if you've got a, a microinverter system. Um, the other thing is on this system, we've got a few panels facing west. So many households have time of use billing where you pay a lot of um, a lot more for your power between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. And so often we'll fill up any western roof with panels um, just to help you get as much electricity generated as possible later into the afternoon. Um, this photo was taken in the morning, so you can see that the the panels on the west there um, haven't really kicked into gear yet. They're still underperforming compared to the ones facing north. But then as the sun gets around to the west, they will, the western panels will then start to um, output a lot more power than the other ones. And then so the final part here is with the online monitoring is you get to see the blue there is what the solar system has produced. The orange, importantly, is how much solar power you've consumed, or sorry, just electricity in general. And then the, the gray is like the room for improvement. And so that's how much electricity you've bought from the grid and how much you've exported to the grid. 
And I've chosen this as an example because what you can see is over time, you'll get a, a good sense of the trends of how much solar power you're able to use. So because this house is sending so much electricity back out to the grid on this day, um, it was yeah almost 19 kilowatt hours. This is a really good candidate for battery storage because instead of sending the electricity to the grid, um, you can actually store that in a battery to then use in the evening when you come home from work. Okay, and then in terms of what's not included with a solar system, uh, the first big one that a lot of people ask us about is battery storage. So there's no storage with a solar system, but you can certainly add batteries to a system. And so they come at a cost. This Tesla Powerwall there that you can see in the image, um, they're around 15 to $16,000 in Sydney, fully installed. Um, and they have a capacity of about 13.5 kilowatt hours, which is often quite a good size for a, for a family household. But importantly, if you're just getting a solar system, battery storage is not included. And then the next is this whole list of kind of hidden extras that stem from a problem that I alluded to before, which is that um, many solar installers don't quote for your household. What they'll do instead is have a set price for a system and then there'll be a list of things that you need to tick the box for if if you qualify um, and it can be a bit confusing because you don't really know if you, you should be ticking the box or not and so at least for us here at Solaray we will be quoting for your house um, and take everything into consideration so some installs will be a lot easier and cheaper than others if they're a bit more complicated they'll be a, li a bit more expensive and so this list of we call them hidden extras, but often um, it's not just the fact that they're not talked about, they're also um, a bit confusing. So they start with a double story fee. So if your house has two stories, some installers will charge more for that, a travel fee. So if you um, say a hundred kilometers or more away from, from an installer, sometimes they'll charge more for that. Um, cathedral ceilings is, is one. Because just because it's um, a bit tricky to do a, a cable run through the roof cavity. So in that case, um, we may need to do like a cable run externally and then down into the meter board. And that can come with additional expenses depending on um, depending on the roof, basically. And then the roof type. So we had a look earlier in the video at a clip lock roof with the clamps. There's a small price difference for each different type of roof. So you've got um, a tile roof and, and like a color bond roof. They're fairly standard. But some installers will charge more or less for different types of roofs. Um, the next one is is tilt frames. So some households like to tilt their panels back towards the north. We generally recommend not doing so. Um, and we'll almost always install panels kind of to sit flush with the roof. And the reason being that if you get a really strong wind event um, from the wrong direction, it can actually have an upwards force on your roof. Um, and, and the, the panels kind of act as a sail and can rip your whole roof off. So we do need to be very careful about tilting panels, but it is certainly possible to do. And um, a tilt like this, where it's probably, you know, what do you, what, what do we say? That's about five degrees or so. That's normally fine. And it's something we can, we can certainly um, do if it's, if it's something that you want to have. Um, in terms of how much it costs, generally as a ballpark figure, it's, it's around $50 per panel. But it can be a bit more or less depending on the size of the system and that type of thing. Um, so after that there's a few incidentals. So for example removing an existing system if you've got a broken system that you want to kind of tear down and replace it with a new one that's something we can do. Um, installing panels sideways or, or landscape that can sometimes come with a, an additional expense. And installing panels on multiple roof areas or in different orientations. So um, per string of panels, often there will be some hardware that needs to be included, such as like a DC isolator switch or that type of thing. And so in that case, um, yeah, some installers will charge like a, 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 split, a, a fee to split the array. Um, all right, so then there's, there's a few things that can happen depending on your house. And a lot of the time, this will only be on older households. But firstly, if you have a really old roof, and typically it'll be terracotta tiles. Um, if an installer gets up onto the roof and, and simply steps on a tile, older, older terracotta tiles can, can break. And so we ask before the installation to have some spare tiles available so that if a, if a tile does break, the installers can
can help to kind of replace any that do crack. Um, the other thing that again is more to do with older houses, but specifically um, or often in the inner west or, or on, on the North Shore, some meter boards aren't up to current standards. So for example, they might, they might be too high is one thing we, we will often see. And so in that case, we actually need to bring the whole meter board down. Um, and, and often it's actually a good idea just to completely replace the, the meter board with a new one, um, just so everything's up to current regulations. But um, sometimes it's not such a big job, like there'll just be a few things missing. And so that electrical work, we can, we can often provide a quote, one of our installers who's a licensed electrician can, can provide a quote for that work, or you can, you know, get your own electrician basically or, or get other quotes to make sure that you're happy with with the work that's being done at the right price. Um, and and basically again, like we'll need that to be done before the installation starts. And then we can come in once everything's okay and 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 do the solar. Um, and finally, um, kind of what we would classify as cable runs that aren't standard. So sometimes, for example, you might be installing panels on a shed or on a garage, but the meter board's on the house. And so we'll need to work out how we can do a cable run. Um, and, and so we've had some customers, for example, build, dig a trench for us before we come. And you might think, oh, why isn't the solar company doing that? It's like, well, you don't necessarily want to be paying an, a, an electrician to come and dig a trench for you. Um, and so we don't include um, cable runs like that, but we certainly can do the cable run once we come out, but we just need to have a look and then quote it up to make sure that um, everything goes smoothly on the day of installation. And then the other thing to do with cable runs is if it's a, a building job. So if you're building, um, we can come in before the installation date and do a rough in of the cable through a wall cavity before the cladding goes up on the walls. However, some builders don't allow third parties on site. And so in that case, we can work with you to basically tell you or your builder what cable needs to be run. And then so that way, um, when everything's finished and um, you're back in control of the site again after handover, we can come out and, and do the solar installation for you um, and the cable will be there waiting for us. Uh, so in summary, that's a bit of a, um, a list of things that sometimes aren't included in a solar install. Um, most of the time, of course, if you've got a specific question, it's best to give us a call so that we can give you personalized advice. And uh, the number for that is 1300 525451. Just give us a call and um, we'd be happy to help with whatever queries we've you, you've got. We've also got a live chat on, on the website during business hours um, and there's a link down below to be able to request a callback. So hopefully that helps and we'll see you in the next video.